The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time to go on the mat. The Cedar Valley's longest running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. Welcome to On the Mat. I am Kyle Klingman of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum, joined by the Dark Knight, Doug Van Gelder. Welcome, Dark Knight. What is a Dark Knight? It's Batman. It's your black shirt. It's Batman. Okay. Yeah. I think I thought there was some Star Scott, Wars reference. I think or Scott, I should have used Star Wars with Rogue One being out. Are Are you a Star Wars guy? Do Not you, really. Is there a franchise, movie franchise you get into? What do you mean by a franchise? Oh, Star Trek. No. Batman. No. Batman. Superman. I just wish they'd yeah. make more like Forrest Gump. Well, that's that's a one-time deal, and it shouldn't be replicated. No. They hit a home run with that. Well, they that. could go a lot further with that. Well. <laughs> to pick him up after his son's grown up. That would be a, hey, maybe hey, there's your, <laughs> there's your next idea. Move, great That'd movie idea. That'd be a idea. sequel. Yeah. Is that, so is that your favorite movie? Forrest Gump? <laughs> you know, I think it is. Really? The one yeah. you come back to? Yeah. It really is. It's it's a blast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one to, to catch up on. and. Well, there's so much that I can relate to in that movie that went on in it that, yeah. you know, it's basically framed around the same time of me growing up at that same same time. Yeah. Do so. you have a scene that sticks out for you that, that uh, is memorable? Yeah. And while you're thinking, I'll just say this, as a, as a former runner, I can't tell you how many times I'd be out running and I'd hear run, forest, run. I'd get garbage thrown at me, run, forest, run, just all kinds of stuff. And they thought it was stuff funny. Stuff happens. Yeah. <laughs> they thought it was funny every time, and it's not that funny. Maybe it was to them, and maybe I would have thought it was funny if I was on the... But just the way, the matter of fact way that he's telling the story and these people don't realize, you know, he's sitting there on the, the bus bench and... It's, Life it's is a, like a box of chocolates. <laughs> it's just a hoot to me. I yeah. just love it. it. It makes sense that that would it's be innocent. in your wheelhouse for for the movie you like or the the top movie in your in your class. So I applaud that. And although this we, we have a national scope, I still like the the local flavor. There, there's a term that gets used here because it's called the Cedar Valley. And I'm sure you you know that term. Mm-hmm. If, if mm-hmm. Sure. I was to say Cedar Valley to you, what what would that encompass to you when I say Cedar Valley, as far as just the the community and the I towns? think the whole corridor from Waverly to Iowa City. You think that's Cedar Valley? Well, yeah, I do. You know, Iowa City. I guess that's the Iowa River that goes through there, but Cedar Rapids goes. You know, the Cedar goes through the Cedar Rapids, and I think that's the Cedar Valley. Well, see, in my in my head, I always thought of it as a way to bring Waterloo and Cedar Falls together. Of into course, a focus. Yeah, into a focus. I, I know that there's people on both sides that don't like that terminology because, I mean, let's be honest, there is a there is a, a division between the two cities. I mean, you grew up grew up with it. I did, for sure. I mean, when I grew up... Not I really. I grew up in Grundy Center. Well, yeah, but you knew about it living in Cedar Falls, I would assume. You, you just kind of knew about it? Or you know, I live out it. on the ranch, and I really well, don't put much time into the civic uh, scene here. So, Well, thanks for helping me out with this and flowing <laughs> in the right direction. What I'm saying is that there is that. Scott can attest to that there's a gap, and I think that the Cedar Valley was a way to combine that, wouldn't you say? I yes, mean, I agree. So, but I, so my, my general thought was that it was Cedar Falls and Waterloo. I didn't realize until I, I contacted Aaron Buzza at the Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau. He said it's generally Waterloo, Cedar Falls, Waverly, Independence, Grundy Center, where you're from, Denver, Hudson, and Dyke. I had no idea that that was what the Cedar Valley encompassed. I guess the mini creek from Grundy Center ends up in the Cedar. I'm not sure. I, I'm gonna <laughs> ki- I'm gonna kick out. I have to kick out Grundy Center. I know though. Black Hawk Creek does. Gr- Grundy Center's out for me uh, because of one reason. Me they don't too. Have, they don't have a wrestling program. Yeah, me too. They're, you you can't be in Iowa and function properly and not have a wrestling program. That's I just, agree. That 100%. is one hundred percent. It's just that's you just can't do it. I don't. They're even always know. looking for some you know way to raise money, and I I always get contacted, but I just refuse to. What the high school? Yeah. Yeah. 
just not in my wheelhouse where, anymore. They where do they up. wrestle? Refresh me on where they, if you are a Grundy Center resident or a high schooler, where do you wrestle? Is it? I don't know anymore. BCLUW? I don't know. Okay. It was for a while, and then it went to Tama. Yeah. I don't know if they're doing anything with Rhinebeck now or Dyke or I have no idea. Yeah, another sad tragedy with another G. Grinnell College doesn't have wrestling. Wow. That's just not good if you're a, a college and Drake doesn't have wrestling. You know, Drake, it's been a long time. Yeah, that's a, that's a real tragedy. Rick, Rick Rubel was uh, wrestled for Drake. Yeah, Mike Grove. Followed him pretty close down there. I'm sure I saw some of the last matches they ever had down there. So, Boy, they could do some good <clears throat> things if they resurrected that program. Yeah, and you'd it, think so. And especially with Grinnell. Grandview right there. I mean, they could really... Bump it up, you yeah, know. It's, uh, Even if they went NAIA. I don't know yeah. if you can do that if you're an NCAA school in other sports. Oh, not, probably but. not. I don't think you could do that. If you're an NCAA-sanctioned school, you couldn't go another another level. But I think you could go club if you wanted to, at least get started with Drake N- having N- a club NWCA. program. Yeah, and, and, yeah, NCWA. N- yeah, NCWA, National College Wrestling Association. Yeah. yeah. So you could do that. Get, get it started, but I don't know who's behind that and how that would happen. They, my, my only recollection, I don't know if you remember when Gable was going to run for governor, he thought about it in about 01, 02. Does that ring a bell for you? Not really. Okay, well, he was going to run for governor, and he said his first priority would be to get Drake's wrestling program back. Now, does that show you where his mind was? With uh, That's where his de- <laughs> you know, that's where Dan's mind is all the time. Yeah, it sure is. Wrestling is number one, period. It sure is. Who wants to compete for number two? I don't care. Well, number one. Number one's wrestling. Number one's wrestling. We got uh, a couple people who are either number one in the world or close to it. We <clears throat> took a little detour, and I like this because the uh, UWW, United World Wrestling, wisely had the world championships for the non Olympic weight classes. So there were two in men's freestyle, two in women's freestyle, and two in Greco. So six weight classes contested for the non-Olympic weight classes. And we have the two medalists from the United States, Allie Reagan, who got a silver at 132, and world champion Logan Steber at 134 will be on the program with us. So typically during this college wrestling heavy portion of the season, you want to be able to talk about that, but it's so special to win a, a world championship and to have Absolutely. it in December. We uh, we have to talk to them, and we've had Allie on the program before. We have not had Logan on the show. We never did have Logan on. No, we've had uh, we've we've had Kyle Snyder on so many times, of course his uh, his former teammate, but we have not had four-time NCAA champion, four-time state champion, and now world champion Logan Steber on the show. And so I'm excited to talk to him about that and just. Uh, rehash a little bit about uh, what he's done not only with his college career but just what he did i mean it, to me it's 100 percent legit i don't even think you need to qualify it it's a it's a legitimate world championship because we went from 10 all the way to six now we only have eight this is a, a true blue world championship and uh, as far as i'm concerned this is uh he's the real deal uh, logan Seaver is a, a world champion and uh he, he should be recognized that way by the United States, and hopefully he gets uh, all the recognition for that and doesn't have some sort of an asterisk next to it because uh, there's maybe a tendency to do that at, at times, but it was a full world championship, and congratulations to Logan Steber and Allie Reagan for getting uh, medals at the world championship. Yeah. Two out of six, so we sent six competitors, and we got uh, a third of those were uh, finalists. That's uh, That speaks well for, for the United States. Don't know if you followed uh, any wrestling, Doug. Uh, it's been two weeks since we've been on the program. We had Jeff Bradley on uh, on last week, but just a, a lot of good happenings. It's a it is a funny time of year. I still think we should start the season with the Midlands and the Southern Scuffle and, and progress from there and end in April. I don't know if that's uh, ever going to go well, that we're, direction. We're, we're all in kind of a state of flux, you know, looking at that extended season in the future. I mean, how's that going to work? Is, is this is this competitive season going to get kicked off with the Midlands? Well, that's just my idea. I think that that's one of the suggestions is to to go in April, and that that was a, a storyline early in the season, and I like it because you just have a dead period right now, and we moan and complain about this, and and you have to bring it up periodically because it it needs to stay relevant, but. My goodness, you have these gaps where, hey, basketball's got stuff going on where you get to watch Holiday games. tournaments and, you know, 
I guess there's some of that that goes on Las Vegas and Reno. Yeah. But those are even early in December or late November. Yeah, so you just had the Reno we're tournament. Just, we're washed out right now. Yeah. There's nothing going on. There isn't. And you. I mean, you got the the Midlands coming up. Yeah. And the Southern Scuffle. Yes. Big events. I'm not so sure that those shouldn't be the start of the season. They should be. <laughs> I'm for you on that. That's that's what should kick off the season. Start after, with the tournament after Christmas, basically. Yeah, just after Christmas, you you get to start fresh. You've you've trained during that time, and then it's not this split season where, my goodness, you're starting in dual meets in November. But where's the momentum? And then you go into January. It's like a different season. Then you you're get starting you know, all over again. Yeah, you start all over again, and it's just wrestling battles that just the flow and and even just. When you have, uh, you, I hope people will be itself. open to giving it that that t- type of test. You know, in the future, it's like let's let's do it this way and see how it works out. Two or three years, they need to make a commitment for that length of time at yeah. least. And, and Bob Bowlesby from Waterloo, Iowa, who's the uh, the head of the Big Twelve Commission, yeah. Big T- Twelve Commissioner, he said that he said, "Are you crazy? Why would you go up against NCAA men's basketball?" There's no logic to it, Doug. And so as we continue to, to bring this issue up and what we do, it's just, hey, people say that. you just you, We've had a few you and I duels, but, but what's the, the turnaround and where's the, where's the buildup? Because you, you can't spend two days in Evanston, Illinois all the time, even as a wrestling fan. That's a big track. And it's, those are long days. You have four sessions you have to go to, and that's a, a big time commitment versus where Northern Iowa – they have North Carolina. They get to go down there and have a good game tonight. And uh, it's uh, it's pretty special when you, you have those opportunities. But it's uh, something that wrestling battles, and it's, uh, it's an issue we need how, to how continue to bring up. How many competitive dates do they hit, are they allowed? I don't know the number. On the NCAA. But, but I think there's stipulations where if it's – I don't know if Midlands counts as one date or if it counts as two dates. I'm sure it counts as one. I think one it's event. one date, one event. But I know that that was the big beef with uh, with Jay Robinson. He always said we don't have enough dates for competition. Absolutely. Where we <laughs> we don't have enough to to suffice. I mean, it just doesn't. It's not sustainable. And when you have schedules, I mean, hey, we've done this before, and it's been a couple of years since we brought it up. But remember you when be we able to do we've two checked a week, this, Doug? Two a week for six weeks. We've checked, Doug. We did that one year. We we checked, and there was a. I want to say a seven or eight week gap between home dual meets. Absolutely. At times, and you just say, there's just zero chance you build a fan base, and then you get a, a Division three programs. They have three home dual meets, so you just you just don't build any momentum. And uh, they got the right idea down at Iowa City, where they schedule two or three teams to come in and they wrestle. That's one date, one commitment, four matches a kid can get. Yeah. And it's a good concept. I think, uh, I don't know who threw out the idea. It would just be fun if it really was a, it's called the Iowa City Duels, and they bring in uh, Cornell, and they brought in Iowa Central. Man, why not bring in Northern Iowa, Wartburg, Upper Iowa? Upper Iowa, yeah. Just just bring in a, some teams where, hey, if, if I knew Wartburg was wrestling Iowa, or even Northern Iowa for that matter, but we've talked about that a lot, where are the rivalries that we we could have in this state that we're missing out on? That's what we're really missing out on is the rivalries. Upper Iowa against Wartburg. You know, you, how do you get forty two thousand people to go to a wrestling meet in November, unless you got something like Iowa and Oklahoma State had last year? Yeah. And that was just as much about, you know, having that com- competition against each other as it was about doing it at in, in a football stadium. Yeah, and. <laughs> the the argument is is that you have a, a Wartburg guy at Grandview, in Nick Mitchell, yep. and you have a of course Eric Keller's the coach at Wartburg. Hey, they like being friends. I get that, but for the health of our sport, a Grandview versus Wartburg does nothing but great things for our sport. Uh, even uh, a Loris now with T.J. Williams or T.J. Miller, I, I mess that up occasionally. T.J. Miller being there. Loris versus Grandview, Upper Iowa versus Wartburg. I mean, let, let's mix this mix this up because I'll tell you what; those are dual meets that really, as a fan, I'm going to go travel to see. I would go to Des Moines to watch Grandview. Well, look at what they got going on with the uh, Iowa 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 State Drake and Northern Iowa basketball. Those four play each other. Yeah. One tournament. I mean, each year it, it kind of rotates and who plays who. But gosh, you could do that same thing with the wrestling. Yeah. 
we're, we're missing the opportunity. Oh, yeah, we are. And, and just by being bound by tradition or just uh, thinking, oh, this is the way it's got to be. Yeah. You know, nobody's put a lot of thought into it. Nobody's really tried to sell the sport, I don't think. It, locally or just nationally? Uh, you, know what? Well, you know, locally we've, we've yeah. done okay. We've tried anyway. But, I mean, nationally, it's like, oh, gosh, where do I get my wrestling scores? You know, there's a lot of people out there don't know where to look for that. Yeah. That hurts. Yeah. Uh, although I will say that there's been some good things going in the right direction, like the, the Rutgers meet where they had, what was it, 17,000, and, yeah. and they're doing some innovative things. But they're, they're pockets. It's not a, a sustainable product yet. They're, they're pockets of, of interest. But celebrate the pockets that we have. Other than the Iowa Conference, correct me if I'm wrong, other than the Iowa Conference – where you know that Wartburg's likely going to wrestle Co, and that's still an exciting meet, and, and you like that. Now you have the built-in Loris versus Wartburg because you have Jim Miller's son coaching at Loris, and then you have, you of course, went to Wartburg. You have that built-in. But other than that, and then Iowa versus Iowa State, what are we missing out on? Iowa versus UNI. I guess we do have Iowa State versus UNI. That's a big one, and that does get me excited. But Upper Iowa versus anyone. That's a Division II program. I'd love to just see them get out there and, and wrestle more Iowa schools because they're boxed in. It's the only Division II program. Let's see them mix it you know, up. I would like to think that coaches don't care. You know, They're going, going in there with the idea of winning, but they can't have that in the back of their mind that if we lose, oh, our program, lo- you know, our program is just done if we lose to them. You know, that, that type of thinking has to be thrown out the back door. Yeah, it does. We, we need prepare as best more. as you can and see who the best man is that yep. day. Yep. Hey, this has been a, a good topic of conversation. We just have a, a minute or so left. I want to make sure we get to this as far as just the the Division One teams right now. Hey, you, you know I'm so I like Penn State wrestling product. I think they do a great job. Sure. Uh, the the team that I think that we need to just continue not to to forget about. And what they have for depth is Ohio State. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you have three national champions on the team. And the guy, if you watch the Big Ten Network and you watch the Missouri versus Ohio State meet, you got to see a freshman named Colin Moore at 197. That kid's going to be special. That kid took down Jaden Cox, I mean, just a beautiful double leg, and really pushed him to the wire and has no quit. I am excited about what he's going to do the remainder of the season. And you have to think that Kyle Snyder being there has a lot to do with his progress. But you have three national champions on the team. You have uh, 174 pounds. You have the number one ranked wrestler in the nation in Bo Jordan. You have his brother, Micah Jordan, who's fifth at 149. And uh, up and down the lineup, you have a few little holes. I think if we listened to the archive, you, you, you would have heard that from me about three or four weeks ago. Well... I'm I'm getting like you where my memory is short term. Uh, okay. It's a little longer than yours. Yours is about five seconds, <laughs> or or maybe even less than that. But I just uh, said what? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But no, you, I, yeah, I do remember you get, like in Ohio State though, and I just want to give them credit because I think yeah, Thomasella moved up a ways. Thomasella moved up to 133. That's going to be a tough pull for him there because it's uh, it's much more competitive, and this yeah. is, you know, he's not an overly big at 33. No. But we need to uh, nix this segment when we get to go right into a world silver medalist with Allie Reagan as their second appearance on the program. She's next on the mat, 1650 The Fan. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When all you want is sports, all you need is 1650 The Fan. We are back on the mat, 1650 The Fan. I'm Kyle Klingman of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum along with Doug Van Gelder, and kudos to uh, United World Wrestling for being wise enough to have non-Olympic wrestling world championships or non-Olympic weight class world championships. It's a great idea. I I love it. And uh, we have two of the medalists from the United States on with us. The first is uh, one that won a silver medal at the female freestyle world championships. Allie Reagan was a silver medalist at 132 pounds. How are you, Allie? Good, how are you? Hey, great to have you on. appreciate you taking the time with us. Uh, it's holiday season. What uh, What do you got planned? Uh, I just got done with wrestling practice, actually, with my dad's high school team back in Carbondale, Illinois. Oh, yeah? you So you're working yeah. out with them all uh, all through the, the holiday season? Yeah. 
And you have a great uh, dynamic with your dad, and, and we'll start with that because your dad has been your coach and, and done a lot for you. Uh, the, the dynamic, I think your dad actually went to the world championships and coached you, is that correct? Yes. And, and, yeah, that was awesome. And what's that been like to have your, your dad there as a father figure but also as a coach? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, this is the first uh, international event he got to coach me at. So other than that, it's really been domestic that he could coach me at, which I get because it's a lot of um, – depends which coaches get to go on tours and stuff like that. So I was really excited when Coach Steiner asked if it was okay that my dad came, and I was like, of course, that's awesome. So, yeah, it was great having him there, definitely. And your dad got you into the sport, correct? I mean, he was the one that yeah. really exposed you to, to wrestling. And, and did you gravitate toward it right away? Because I think right at five years old you were starting out, weren't you? Yeah, um, he wrestled at SIUE, and then he coached. he's coached at Carbondale for ages, gosh. And then my older brother wrestled, so... I was like, I might as well, instead of like sitting on the sides, kind of being bored. So I just kind of joined in. <laughs> did, did you uh, did, did you gravitate toward it right away, or is, is it something that your dad saw that you might take a, a liking to it? How, how did you really kind of uh, find that uh, that blend to, to find that wrestling was a good fit for you? Um, I played a lot of sports growing up, so I think that um, I mean, up until college, I played so many sports. So I think. But it was just kind of one of the sports that I enjoyed. I actually liked soccer the best. But then um, once college came around, I was like, you know what? I'm going to actually just focus on wrestling because I've always wrestled boys. So I think once I just focus on wrestling and wrestling girls, obviously women's wrestling has a lot more opportunities than soccer would have allowed me to go internationally and stuff like that. Is that a good way to get immersed when, when you – grow up wrestling and, and you're wrestling guys even at the age of five I would guess that that has to just be commonplace for you that that never seems strange yeah no it's people are always asking me like was it weird wrestling boys and I'm like no not at all it's actually not what I prefer but like I love wrestling boys because they bring this fight they're they don't really care if you're a girl they're gonna scrap with you and they're I mean they're gonna give it your all they might even give you more knowing that they might lose to a girl so I think that that coming, that like um, fight that they're going to bring, I love that because that means I'm going to have to bring the fight back to keep up. So I actually like wrestling boys a lot. And that's a that's a topic that a lot of people bring up, and I would be interested in your take on that. I know that some people are just adamant against uh, boys versus girls wrestling. Where, where do you stand on that? Of course, you, I'm sure you would like to have all women's wrestling, but are, are you opposed to uh, to women mixing it up with the guys? No, I love that the whole women mix it up with the guys. I think it makes you tougher. Um, and just really brings out the grit and the intensity that the sport really encompasses. So I think that wrestling guys, that's what it gave me. And um, either like fight or flight, you're either going to have to fight or you probably shouldn't do the sport. And um, I think that that's really why I like the women's and men's mixing it up, kind of. But I'm all for sanction your own women's wrestling, too, because I think that's that whole women's and men's, that kind of scares a lot of girls away from the sport. So I think that if we do mix it, do keep it just women and have their own, like, sanction in high school and stuff like that, then I think our numbers would grow like crazy. So I think, I mean, I'm all for both. Like, So I, I like both components. We're on the mat with Allie Reagan. She won a silver medal at the World Championships in December. We're talking about uh, how you got into the sport and what you're doing right now. You're wrestling uh, with the, uh, the guys team right now. I, I'm always interested in this. When you go into a guy's practice like that and you wrestle with uh, the high school boys, as you mentioned, that uh, you, you like to mix it up and go with pretty much anyone that's uh, willing to compete, can mm -hmm. you take the guys? Is, is it something that you're that much better than those high school kids at this level? Um, my dad's high school team, yeah, the ones around my weight class. Um, but I don't, I mean, obviously world class, like high schoolers, they've come to the training center and a lot of them have beaten up on us girls. But <laughs> so I think that. Regardless, you're going to have to bring it. But as far as the guys here, I usually hold my own against. How, how much have you followed the the history of women's wrestling and, and going back? Because there is a, a new book out, uh, Wrestle Like a Girl, and, and I know you're familiar mm -hmm. with that uh, be, because you had, uh, I believe you have some involvement with that. But just looking back and knowing that, uh, hey, in 1989, we had Afsun Johnson on. She talked about going back to that era and they gave the prettiest wrestler award instead of the outstanding wrestler yeah. award. They gave uh, yeah. kitchen <laughs> kitchen appliances. It, are, are you aware of that history of, and how far you've come? Yeah, it's it's crazy to think that that was actually real life. <laughs> they gave those kind of awards and stuff like that out. 
But, I mean, I'm Patricia Miranda, one of our first, like, Olympic medalists. She's my all-time favorite wrestler. So I love, like, where our sport has come from. And those four founding, like, Afton's one of our coaches now, and I think that's awesome. And those girls just built our program and built U.S. Women's Wrestling and how we are today. So I think that with them, without them, our program would not be the same. So it's awesome what they did. So you have uh, conversations with these pioneers in women's wrestling about what uh, what transpired and what took place? Yeah, totally different things that they had to go through than what we have to go through now. So, I mean, I give them mad props for sticking it out and definitely paving away, making it us, our sport a thing, really. Well, I give you mad props for sticking with it uh, and being part of the world championships here in December. Because, uh, of course, we had the Olympic trials here in Iowa City, and then you made the team to go to the uh, the non-Olympic weight class world championships. How, what what did you have to do to stay motivated to know that that was on the horizon and stay in shape? And, of course, you go in training cycles, but to have that looking ahead in December, what kind of motivation did you have to have? How did you have to stay uh, stay in shape in order to, to see that end game in December? Um. Gosh, after I lost the trials, I didn't even know if I was going to keep wrestling. I was like, okay, maybe, you know, things didn't plan out how they were supposed to, so maybe I need to move on and try something else, you know. But I think I took the whole summer off. Well, not completely off. I just didn't go on a couple tours. I just stayed and trained, really, instead of gone and competed. And I think I really needed that to get my priorities straight in my head on before I started this new quad. And I knew once um, fall rolled around, really, and Olympics were over that – 60, 55 or 60 were an option. So definitely that kept me with my head on straight and kept me grounded. You know, wrestling takes you to such low places and such high places that, I mean, it was crazy to think looking back now that I wasn't going to continue wrestling once I lost at trials, but you're in a totally different frame of mind then. So I think that once I got over that and uh, really moved on kind of and got my head on straight, I was going to go for a non-Olympic world. So I think that that definitely gave me some motivation and something to look forward to and train for. So it was definitely a great thing that happened in my life. And this was your fourth world team that you made. You you got a medal, a uh, silver medal at yeah. this world championships. I, I would think that has to keep you motivated going through 2020. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, no one hopes for silver or anything like that. So many people are like, great job, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, thanks, I guess. You know, <laughs> But in reality, it's like, I, that's not where I want to be. So I don't, find myself I'm like oh good job Allie but I think that it's really hard for me to process that but it's definitely moving forward towards the ultimate goal of winning worlds and Olympics so step in the right direction so, for so, sure but yeah. not the ultimate Let, let's take what you said there because that's a, a typical wrestling mentality is of course you want the gold yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. you got a silver medal it's a great step you're one spot away from being the best in the yeah. world uh, certainly better than going 0 and 1 and having that yeah. uh, having that happen. How do you just build on that and know that hey, even though it's not what you wanted, it is really a big accomplishment because not many people have a world medal. Um, I think it definitely opens my eyes uh, and makes me more confident leading into like the next world and this next cycle that I can hang with those girls and that I belong on that world stage and on the podium. So I think that it brings me back something to work on definitely, which is great because if I won, it's like okay, you're the best you kind of get complacent, but it's almost when number two, you're like, okay, I'm close. I got to keep going, keep buckling away at the heels of the next girl. So I think that that is almost a good thing really to keep me focused and keep training. We talked about the, the progress of not only where you are as a competitor, but just the women's wrestling movement from when you started until now, what have you seen as being the changes? Um, just the numbers, I think really like usually, um, Back in the day, it was there was only a few certain teams that were like the ultimate best, like top three teams. Those are the only good girls, really. But now at Worlds, you see so much depth, and every country is really going to bring it. And they have girls like three deep at every weight that they could bring at Worlds, and every one of them is going to be tough as nails, you know. So I think the depth of women's wrestling has is crazy now, and I think that that's definitely what's changed the most. And everyone's down to fight when it comes to international competition. And, and when you, uh, you, you went, were a two-time national champion in, uh, in college, w mm -hmm. when you look back at that experience, was that fun for you to be able to have that opportunity as a female as we look at more opportunities? I would think that that's just a great outlet for more women to get involved with, to, to go the college route and, and find wrestling in that way. 
Oh, yeah. There's so many college opportunities and scholarship opportunities for those women's wrestlers because every year you hear about five new college teams that are joining with the women's wrestling. So I think that so many more opportunities for us girls to really get a scholarship and go to college. And then from there, who knows, I ended up at the training center. You could end up training center, WCAP, any of these clubs, and then you could compete on the senior level. So I think that college is just really a start, and it really opened my eyes, and I love that I went to college and got to compete on a dual team and make great friends and enjoyed that college experience, got a degree, which is nice too. So I think that definitely the college route I, I loved. It was an awesome experience. Do you see yourself being a coach, following your dad's footsteps? Um, I do. I want to be an athletic director ultimately, but I could see myself um, being a coach leading up to that yeah. in career. Fantastic. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure your dad would uh, would have a lot of advice on how to handle certain situations, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. We're on the line with uh, Ellie Reagan. She is a world silver medalist. This is her uh, fourth world team. We're talking about her career and uh, where she goes next. I want to make sure we get this in because you're the first female we've had on since we've asked this question, and that is if you could create your wrestling Mount Rushmore, who would be on it? Wrestling Mount Rushmore. Okay, obviously Gable. Okay, so we've got, what, is that four? You, you have four, Gable? so you're one down, three to go. So you got okay, Gable. Okay, Burroughs. Burroughs, okay. Smith, John Smith. All right. Oh, gosh, that last one's hard to fill. There's so many options. Uh, <laughs> Patricia Miranda. I'm gonna... Okay, we'll put a girl on that. We'll put Patricia. <laughs> Darn right, Patricia yeah. I mean, you you yeah, mentioned her put earlier. The brands, put the brands on the side. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they can fight it out for that. Yeah, they can exactly. Fight it out. Now, do you, are you a, a student of the sport as far as, far as following uh, Division One college wrestling? Do you stay on top of that? Yes, I'm a big college wrestling fan. Are you? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, but sometimes when, when you're wrestling and you're in that uh, frame of mind where you're, you're focused on training, sometimes you can uh, lose a little bit of steam. Who's your team do you follow in, uh, in college? I'm a Hawkeyes fan. You are? Yes. Okay, because when we lined this up, you said you were in Iowa City, so I, I didn't know if you were down there training. Yeah. or Okay. Yeah, I, I date Corey Clark, actually. Okay. Well, okay, great. Yeah. Is he doing yeah, all right? I'm definitely, definitely a Hawkeyes fan. Yeah, right. he's good. Okay. I'm excited to see how he's doing. Four-time state champ from uh, from the state of Iowa. As you look forward, uh, of course, you just got your uh, silver medal at uh, the World Championships. What what do you take? Do you take a little time off now? Do you get yourself geared up for the World Championships next year? How do you uh, approach this in the uh, the coming months? Um, I took the last week off since trials, but I was going a little stir crazy. So um, just to let some injuries and stuff heal. So now is my first. This week's my first week back. Um, after last week, and then um, I mean we have a huge tournament Uregan at the in Russia at the end of January. So you really can't stop training. And then from then you just keep going in the competition. So the Uregan, there's World Cup, and then there's World Team Trials. So you just keep. You can't really get out of shape and let yourself kind of not get in, not stay in the mode. You know. All right, now I, I want to get into, you, you talked about dating uh, Corey Clark, but there, on your profile you have a, a few mm. things that they talk about your personal life. Uh, hobbies include shopping, which would, I think, be perfect for right this <laughs> Christmas time. Have you gotten all your shopping done? I have. I'm going not as crazy this year, but I'm definitely still working on shopping, but I'm close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> quite working on the technique yet or what? More. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, but it's still <laughs> something you enjoy. I don't know if you can do that in, in, uh, in Budapest where you just were if you got a little shopping in there, but. Uh, yeah, I definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I, now this is one of your hobbies, it says, is tanning. I, I don't know how you would do that. Is that I'm assuming a tanning bed or, or how does that work? Um, I mean, once it's summertime in Colorado, you're so close to the sun that you can't not lay out and stuff like that so tanning is definitely one of my um gotta get your vitamin d okay I'd say. <laughs> but, but in the in the winter that's a little tougher i, I mean I'm yeah that is definitely tough assuming you're not summer <laughs> yeah in the, in the winter and then uh yoga that seems like something I, I think more wrestlers should get into is yoga i think it'd be really beneficial yeah. I, I don't know more, why more guys don't get into that but have you found that's yeah. been good for you as a as a wrestler yeah, I love, um, I'm more of a hot yoga kind of girl, but um, I love, obviously, us wrestlers love sweating. The regular yoga, I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm kind of uncomfortable and stretching because we're not very flexible. But hot yoga really, at least you're sweating, 
through sweating and getting that flexibility and all those toxins out. So I think that hot yoga is great for wrestlers. And then you're a Cardinals fan. I am, yeah, definitely. Uh, how does, you're, you're from Illinois <laughs> and you're a Cardinals fan. How does that work? Um, I'm from down south, so I live close okay. to St. Louis. Okay. So you definitely didn't want the Cubs to win. No, not at all. <laughs> well, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, though, that they did win. That's awesome. Yeah. Them. Now, as far as training for you, uh, do you go back out to Colorado Springs? Will you uh, kind of be a resident athlete out there again? Yeah, um, I live there year-round. I'm just on a break now. Okay. I came and visited the family during Christmas. But, yeah, I live there. I have, like I live on Complex. Okay. Um, so... I like Colorado Springs a lot. It's awesome. And is that is that really fun to to be on the complex? Because I know that uh, that could be a, a great experience where you just have your training environment. I, I think that would be great to to have that uh, opportunity to train out there. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, the altitude sucks, but when it comes down to it, it's a great for conditioning and stuff like that. I had like 15 minutes between every match, off, like four of my matches. So I was, and I felt great while the other girls were like breaking at Worlds. So that part of Colorado's great and then you just walk a minute and you're at practice from your dorm room or apartment so it's it's great living there are you going to midlands i'm not no not this year all right hey this has been a lot of fun having you on the the program this has been uh, our second time having you on the show and we appreciate you doing that Uh, i know it's not what you wanted but congratulations on your uh, world silver medal thank you all right ellie reagan up next we have four-time ncaa champion four-time state champion and now he's a world champion Logan Stieber, next on the mat, 1650 The Fan. Log on and listen online at 1650thefan.com, the online home of 1650 The Fan. We are back on the mat, 1650 The Fan. I'm Kyle Klingman of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum, along with Doug Van Gelder. Doug, what a great way to end this show. Four-time state champ. One of four four-time Division One NCAA wrestling champions of the most recent and the most recent world champion from the United States. His name is Logan Stieber. He's with us. How are you, Logan? World hey, guys. Champion. I'm good. Hey, it's great to have you on. All right, let's just get this out of the way. How did you lose the medal? How did you lose your belt? And how did you get it back? I know everyone's going to be interested in that. Yeah, so I'll just do a quick version All of right. it. So I got, I got picked up from the airport uh, by my girlfriend. Uh, we went right to eat. Um, and the uh, place where we always go, and uh, we were there for maybe 30, 40 minutes, came back out. Uh, her window, uh, passenger side window was smashed, and uh, my bag, my backpack was in, was in the front seat, and the rest of my stuff was in the trunk. Um, my, my, so my backpack was the only thing stolen. Um, we uh, had a hard time, or I guess, so, so we, we went around and, and, and kind of looked for it, called the cops, and everyone was all over it looking around for it, and uh, about 24 hours later, 20 hours later, we, uh, I got a phone call. They, uh, someone found my bag, and my phone number was on a piece of paper in my bag. So I went to go pick it up, and everything was there except for my iPad and my uh, headphones. So, wow. you know, yeah. Wow. And so you, hopefully you have that, uh, that world championship medal in a safe place now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice and safe. Now, how, how cool is that to get a belt, though? I, I remember uh, Jake Herbert, he got a silver medal in 2009. He said, I, I didn't know they got a belt. How cool is that? I mean, that, that has it's to be really one of the cool. coolest things that, that you get as a wrestler is that belt. Yeah, that, you know what? What's crazy is I really wanted the belt, and I was like, I wasn't sure uh, if they gave the belt. And I, you know, I, I, I didn't really follow the awards, obviously, too much um, in the past years, but I was like, man, I really hope I get a belt. And then, you know, when I won, I got the belt. I was, I was really proud. Well, that's, uh, that's cool. Now, you, you go over, you have uh, some great matches leading up to the, uh, the finals, uh, just right down to the wire. Just take us through some of that when, when you're in that moment and when you have a close match and you have to come through, what that's like to overcome that adversity and pull out a, a tight match like that, especially on the biggest stage. Yeah, you know, it just it, it, all, it all goes back to my training. You know, I, I, when I put myself in that situation, the coaches put my – uh, put me in that situation all the time. You know, 30 seconds goes, 15 seconds goes, down by one, up by one. So I'm there all the time, and I, you know, I make it a point in practice to go crazy and uh, you know do everything I can to score. And um, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. I've been in situations where I've gotten taken down, and 
and uh, you know where I've not gotten takedowns before, but you know this time it, it you know it went my way. But you know I, I definitely uh, attribute it to all the all the times I I've, I've been there uh, in the practice room. Now, going uh, through this season, of course, uh, missed out on the Olympic team, and then you cut down to uh, to 134 to make this uh, this world championship team for this non-Olympic weight class. H- how did you keep your focus on that? How did you keep knowing that uh, this was a, a direction you wanted to go, or, or, or did it come a little bit later in the season? Take us through how you knew you wanted to compete for this spot. Um, so, I mean, after the trials, maybe a month later, they announced that there was going to be a non-Olympic the world championship for the, the two weights that weren't contested, so... For me, it, it you know, I've always thought about moving to 61. Cause I'm not particularly big, uh, 65. And for me, it's a chance to win a world title sooner. You know, I, I, if I have another chance to win a world title, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to go for it. You know, if I'd have been bigger, I'd have won 70. Um, so I, that was definitely going to go to the trials. Um, at one of the weights, and I'm on the smaller side, so 61 the weight. And, so I, you know, I kind of made a plan right away, and maybe from June first on, I, I started my uh, descent. And, and the the cut was okay because you wrestled your your final two seasons at 141 in college. Of course, you get that 24 hour weigh in, so it's a little bit better opportunity to make 134. Was it uh, was it a pretty easy cut for you? Um, y- no. It wasn't. <laughs> no, you got down no, hard. It okay. Sucked. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, and it, it, it's. It's not 24 hours, really. I wish it was. It's about 17 hours. 17, so it, okay. It's, uh, which is, you know, it's close, but <laughs> if I could have another seven hours, that would be even better. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, so it's tough, um, but, you know, I, I've, I've done it. You know, I've done the, the weight cut thing many times, and I know, I, I, I know that I can, I can win and I can feel good the next day. Uh, after the weight cuts, I don't really, really don't worry about how bad I feel going down. But it doesn't feel good, you know. I, I'll tell you that. And it's not something that I, I will do many times is make the weight, um, you know, a couple times a year. We are on the line with Logan Stieber. He was a four-time NCAA champion for Ohio State. He's now a world champion. We're talking about him with him about that uh, that great world championship run. And going back even further, when you were in high school. Of course, you remember this. Sports Illustrated uh, featured you as a, a "Where Will They Be?" along with your your brother. When when you get something like that, Sports Illustrated, that's a big deal, and, and they're putting a, a lot of, of high praise on you going into college. You you met that. You were four time NCAA champion. Now you're a world champion. What did that do for you when Sports Illustrated uh, had that article on you and your brother? Um, you know, I would I would say that it. Uh man, I don't know. You know, for for us, we were never. Uh, overconfident so it, it, it the only thing it did was maybe was, was bring our confidence up you know it's pretty cool to see you know all the work we put into and and you know now we're in sports illustrator you know that that's that's pretty cool so for us it was just kind of uh just i guess letting us know that what we're doing is working you know kind of solidifying like okay all this work you know it's it's working you're getting noticed and and it gave us confidence to be able to you know succeed at any level and and, uh, you know, really so far we have. Um, so it's, it, you know. Yeah, and it, with Hunter, how, how hard was that to watch him just go through the injuries like he did? That's just so tough to, to see him not reach his potential because of uh, something outside of his control. Yeah, it was tough. You know, it was, it was tough. And, you know, it's, it's injuries are it's just uh, a tough part of, of any sport. And I was fortunate enough to, to be healthy. And, and unfortunately, he wasn't. So, you know, he was, you know, was, is, you know, still as good as, as I was, you know, and, but injuries can take a toll on someone, but he, you know, it was tough, but, you know, he went through it, he got stronger by it, and, you know, now he's back wrestling again, I just actually just, he just got back home today, so, I just worked out with him, and feels as good as ever. There's only four people that we can ask this question of, and I think we've only had uh, one of those on, we've had Kyle Dake on the show uh, you are the most recent four-time Division One NCAA wrestling champion. W- when you reach that height, you, you reach that uh, that apex that only four people have done. How do you how do you feel after something like that? How do how do you process doing something that spectacular in our sport? Uh, you know what? I, I don't know if it will uh, if it will like be processed by me until I'm done wrestling. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
I've I've expected to win every every everything that I've you know done in ever since junior high. I've always thought I was gonna win, and I don't always win. I've lost you know plenty of times. I always expect to win, so you know when I do win, it's not uh, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like that that crazy to me. Um, and it, you know it, it will at one point. It will you know I'll look back when I'm done competing, and I think it'll really hit me. But you know I don't know. I just I just know all the work I've done and all the work I put in, and you know I feel like I've I've done enough to to do it to to, to win the titles and and to be where I am. So, um, it, but it's really cool though. You know, it is really cool to 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 be one of the few people who've done it, and you know I couldn't be you know thankful enough for all the coaches and training partners that I've worked with. Now, one of the rivalries that you're remembered for is Tony Ramos, and people love seeing you guys go at it. When you got ready for Tony Ramos, what did you know that was going to happen going into a match like that? Uh, I just knew that it was going to be a you know a tough fight. You know, I, I enjoyed wrestling with Tony. We had some uh, some fun matches, and you know he was very tough, very well coached. So I had to be you know at the very top of my game. So. We had some fun matches, you know, some, some big matches, dual meets and uh, you know, Big Ten finals, and NCAA finals. So they were they were good. You know, Tony is ooh, it's tough. And when you go into that, you you had such a good top game. Did you know that when you were gonna wrestle Tony that that was gonna be an area that uh, that you would have to to not necessarily dominate, but just be good at in order to really set the tone for the match? Yeah, you know, I kind of went into every match. Uh, at least my first, uh, my first three, first three matches. Or so I went in knowing or thinking that I would be able to at least get the riding time point, at least be able to ride him and get away. And, right. And then uh, the last two matches, though, he got away um, with uh, the, the Big Ten finals. He got away, no problem. And at the finals, I was, I was able to score some takedowns and, and ride him to get the riding time point. But you know, he, he got a lot better at getting off the bottom. Um, but I, but I knew it was very important. So it was something I, I stressed. And if I could get more than one takedown, then I could usually chew up enough clock to get uh, the riding time point. I, now, I, uh, now, do you do you get uh, <laughs> some of the uh, the feedback from from Iowa fans who are upset about maybe how the the match went with the you and Ramos in the finals? Because of course Iowa fans, of course you want your guy to win, and they thought maybe you got pinned in that match. But uh, do you get some of that feedback from uh, from Iowa fans and hear about that? Oh yeah, you know I don't, you know you get it from everybody. Sure. You know, I could have won fifteen to zero, and you know you're gonna get some <laughs> right. some some lashback. So right. you know it's it's you know passionate fans. You know Iowa fans are there's a lot of them. So I wouldn't expect anything else. You know from them, and that's that's fine. <laughs> We are on the mat with Logan Steber, four-time NCAA wrestling champion, world champion, and now as you look forward to what's next for you, I, I hope you're going to keep keep competing. I, I hope you're at least thinking about a, a 2020 run and uh, giving us another cycle. Oh yeah, yep. I uh, I, uh, I definitely am. I, uh, I I still feel good. I still feel like I'm getting better, so I'm excited to keep competing and. And uh, definitely, definitely going if I could stay healthy through uh, 2020. Now, I, I think it's worth mentioning. We talked about all your individual accolades, but one of the the most impressive things that I think uh, you were a part of was that 2015 team championship for Ohio State. We talked about how rewarding it, it is to be a four timer, but I would think you could put it in perspective how impressive that is, given just the landscape of college wrestling, to win a team championship in 2015. That had to be really special for you. Yeah, that you know that was the coolest thing we did. You know, I, I I've done, um, you know, it was a team title because it, it was just, you know, about more than just me. You know, I I could, I, I could, you know, pin my way through if I wanted to, and, and that that wasn't gonna do it. You know, so I, I had to be the team brought together, and you know, between Big Tens and and Nationals, and there's just there's awesome. You know, our, our Big Ten, um, was equally as good. In, uh, you know, if you were there, you know, my brother wrestled and he he made the semifinals and it was crazy because his arms were all broken and, and no no elbows. But, you know, so it, between those two tournaments, man, I, there's nothing that, that that's uh, that I've done that's, that's been as cool as those, those two tournaments together. So team title was awesome. 
you, you hear so much about Lou Rosselli, and now he's at Oklahoma, of course, and uh, you still have a great relationship, <laughs> as you have to, but uh, what did he do that was so good that brought international wrestling, especially domestically, brought guys to another level? Yeah, so you know, he, uh, he he was a very good he was a very good athletes coach, um, you know, and he 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 worked us you know he worked us hard, and he he really believed in us. So that that was something I always take from him is uh, is the belief he had in us. You know, everyone everyone can work hard and can push somebody, and there's you know millions of workouts you can do, but you know, he really believed believed in us, and, and he made us believe that we could win. And, uh, and the technical act, uh, technical part of it, he, he just has been in it forever. Right? He's been in it for 20 years and 25 years, so he knows so much that, you know, just being able to teach us and, you know, he could teach Travell, he could teach me, you know, the biggest and yeah. smallest guys. So, you know, he, he was awesome. All right, any chance you're going to pull a David Taylor and, uh, and go to the Midlands and wrestle uh, and give us another a shot at seeing you wrestle at Collegiate? <laughs> No, no, I will <laughs> no. not. You can I mean, see me wrestling in, in a Ohio State room. I, I wrestle folk style, bleeding all the time. Yeah, well, I, I, <laughs> I got to try because we love watching you compete, and uh, it's uh, it's pretty special that uh, you won a world championship. We couldn't be happier for you, and uh, you've had an amazing career, and I know that you're going to have a, a lot more to come. So thanks for joining us, and congratulations. Yeah, thanks. All right, that was uh, Logan Stever, our first time having on him on the program. Great young guy, just really enjoyed his uh, his demeanor, and you see why he won a world championship. He has all the right tools. He talks like a champ, and he wrestles like a champ, so I don't know what more you could ask of any individual. That's right. I think uh, next week might be our last show of the year. It is. Scott's saying yes, so join us next Wednesday for On the Mat. For Logan Stieber, Allie Reagan, and Doug Van Gelder, I'm Kyle Klingman. You've been listening to On the Mat on 1650 The Fan. You've been listening to On the Mat, the Cedar Valley's longest-running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.